thing that happens and is going on in our world and in our family and in our church. God is so faithful. And so, Lord, we come before you this morning and we just want to acknowledge that you are the King of kings, that you are the Lord of lords. And so as we worship you this morning, as we declare absolute truth, will you be honored and would you meet with us this morning? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together. Lift your hands, not to us, but to your name. We lift up, oh, not to us, but to your name. We lift up, oh, praise not to us, but to your name. We lift up. Lift up our praise to you. We lift up all praise, not to us, but to your name. We lift up. Stars in the 
is like a wildest ocean. Oh, nothing else compares. You are the Lord Almighty. You're shining all the stars in glory. Your love is like. Jesus let's pray these words this morning with such an encouragement I count on one thing and the same God never fails will not fail me now working all things out, You're working all things out. So yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valleys. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing, nothing can stand against our shoes. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. And we are here for you. Come and do what you do. you do as 
the most amazing truth that we're declaring this morning that miracles happen and so we're gonna we're gonna carry on singing this song just for a little bit more in a couple of minutes but before we do that i want to ask rian our senior pastor to come up you know we are going through as a church there's so many families and so many situations that we are facing um, and we just want to come before the lord this morning and pray in this time of worship and maybe if you're joining us online Maybe you just want to just indicate in some way that you need God to move in your life. And we have people there that are ready to pray with you. And so you can click the pray button. And our elders are there to pray with you. But I'm going to ask for you to just come up. And corporately, we are going to agree together as a church. Why don't you unite with me and, and we pray together. There's, it's not just one family. I think this has probably been the longest run and the most traumatic experience for us as a church from the start with one family after the next, after the next, after the next. Not just going through a little bit of difficulty from people losing their jobs to depression, people in psychiatric wards, to families losing loved ones, to children dying. Um, so let's pray together. Lord God, we are your people. We're just a community of believers that you have called together to reflect your glory into our community, into our city. And Lord, we can't even meet properly because of the virus. And so we are everywhere this morning, online, in the building, yeah, as we are allowed to be. We come to you, Lord. I thank you for those beautiful pictures in your word, Lord Jesus, where you wept over the city of Jerusalem, where you wept at Lazarus' tomb, Which helps us, which helps us to know that you're just not, you're not just God, but you're a God who's involved. And we pray for those families, Lord. 
Lord, I, I think of people who lose jobs this last week. I think of one of the Abba's Pride team members who was attacked just trying to do a good thing. Lord, I think of people who are struggling with depression in our church right now, some in the, some in the psychiatric hospital. I think of family members who have lost loved ones. And then a lot of people just with questions, Lord. So we, we wait on you. And we come to you, Lord, and, and, and say that many of the, well, all of these things, Lord, we have no control over. We ask for you to intervene. Come and do what you do, Lord. We have heard of your fame. Will you come and do it again in our day? God, I pray not just for you to do a quiet work amongst us, but I pray for a mighty work. Will you show us your glory? In the middle of all of the struggles, will you show us your glory? Will you unleash your power amongst us, Lord? Let the city look on and see that you are a good God. And let this nation see the glory of God. I pray. We'll pray for those families, Lord. In this time, Jesus, you said the Holy Spirit will come and comfort, come alongside, and strengthen. Will you help? Come and do what you do, Lord, we pray. Amen. We need a move. We need a move. We need a move. We are here for you. So we are here for you. Come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you come and do what you do so we need a move Jesus we need a move Miracles happen. Let's believe it. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in your room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Miracles happen. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming. In this room, miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Will you believe that this is a move? This is a move. Oh, this is a move. This is a move. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. You're so good. Amen. If you're in the room, please take a seat. It's so wonderful to have you in the room. Um, we would love for you to come and speak to one of the pastors or myself after the service. If you have any questions or um, any concerns, please come speak to us after the service. If you are online, we are so glad that you're with us. Um, a big welcome from here at Eastside, but also um, Paula is your host at the moment. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to open a private chat with her and chat to her. She is also um, just available for any 
um, questions that you have, but also we have some prayer people on standby. So if you would like prayer, please click the prayer button. Um, she, they would love to pray with you this morning. We have a Connect card um, that is our digital connect card. We don't have a, a paper one anymore because we want to make sure that you are safe if you're in the room or if you're online that you're able to use it. So it's a digital uh, connect card. It, you can go to it by going to eside.org.za and clicking on the connect card. We would love to hear from you if you are new in the room or if you're new online. We'd love to know that you joined us. We'd love for you to share any comments or questions. We'd also love for you to share any prayer requests. We have teams playing on a Tuesday night Wednesday and it would be great to come and join um, you in prayer so please fill that in if you have any um, information that you hear that you want to respond with it's also a great way to respond by using our connect card for events or if you want to join a life group or anything like that please go to our connect card then we have a blanket drive Abba's Pride is running this during the season as it is very cold outside they are helping us to bless the community around us um, so if if you are in the room here and you have a blanket, there's a box outside, a wooden box that you can drop your blanket off by. And if you're on church online and you want to drop off a blanket, please come during the week or on a Sunday during office hours during the week um, and you can drop a blanket off and someone will assist you. But this is a great way that we can connect with Abba's Pride and we can serve our community. Then we, as you know, we have our church online campus that's going really well um, and we have different hosts as pastors we have to be in the room and um and we have been raising up some hosts some people who can host online so if you would love to host if you miss welcoming people in the room if you miss being that contact for people who maybe are coming to church for the first time won't you consider being a host online um, we will train you we'll make sure you have all the information you need um, but it is a great way to serve in this time if you can't be in the room so you can go onto eastside.org.za to to um, click the link there or you can go have our take them a meal so now during our prayer time earlier Mark shared that this he thinks this is the first time we have been able to use take them the meal take them a meal for families for many families in our church we have it so now and then in our church but this time this in this season, we just have so many families who need, who are in need. That either are going through a crisis, or families are welcoming a new baby into their family. And it's been so amazing to see the church community coming together and giving people meals, giving family meal, families meals. So if you love cooking, if you love being able to show love to people through a meal. So won't you sign up to give a family a meal? Um, you can do that on the Church Centre app, um, or you can go to eastside.org.za and click the meal tab. Um, also, if you'd like to be part of this team, if you'd like to make sure that families are getting fed, families are getting the food that they, they need, you can do that on the Church Centre app. Now, to book a seat, if you would love to join us next week, you can book a seat on the website or the Church Centre app we would love you to be in the room if you feel safe enough if you want to be here won't you go on to our center app and book a seat i hope you have a great service um I am so grateful to the many people in Eastside who have given sacrificially. We just heard about the meals um, and how people have come around, people caring. So I want to thank you for everything that you have done. Um, I must say, I did wonder at one stage, you know, with us not being able to meet like this, you know, what would, what would we do for community? But you guys have pursued that. And um, I want to ask you to do some more of that. I want to ask you to be generous care for families, don't miss out on your life groups, make sure that you are with other people. And I'm proactively praying for that day when we'll all be together here again, when we hear the children running around and the young people doing their thing on my right hand side, I can't wait for that day. I'm praying about that. Um, next week I'll be sharing a little bit in my message about a picture that God has given me in His Word of what it means for all of us to worship together. And so we're going to do that next week. But 
I also want to thank those of you who have been faithful in your tithes and giving um, because it has helped us to do a whole lot more, to care for families, to care for those who have lost their jobs, been able to help some of our under-resourced churches in various ways. Um, we've been able to give food, and we have been able to even buy more equipment to be able to be a church in two locations now. Church, yeah, meeting here on a Sunday and a church out there meeting. So we had to buy all kinds of audiovisual equipment. And we've been able to do that without stressing. I want to ask you to do it again. I want to ask you to give sacrificially so that we can continue. We don't know how long this thing is going to carry on. Only the Lord knows. And so this morning, will you be generous? The way to give is our banking details are up there. We've got Snap Scan up there. You should be able to scan it online or, yeah, this morning. So will you give sacrificially so that we can reflect the glory of God brighter and brighter? Let's pray together. God. We are mindful of the fact that there are many people amongst us who are struggling right now. And as I've already prayed that you, will you help, Lord? Will you help? We heard testimonies before the service of how you provided jobs against logic, Lord. And I pray that you would do that for those people among, in Eastside who have lost their jobs. But there are many of us, Lord, who have been blessed. And I pray, Lord, that you loosen our hearts so that we be able to give generously, maybe over and above our tithe, give generously so that we may reflect the glory of God better, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you take some time while the music's playing. Let's bless the Lord with our faithfulness because he has been so faithful to us. So how many of you um, are just hoping that President Suramap comes online to make an announcement that 2020 is cancelled? It's over. No more. Um, tomorrow night is the 31st of December 2020, and we are going straight into a new year. COVID's been fake. Um, oh, wait, I don't want to get the conspiracy theorists excited because I think I, think I will. Man, hasn't it just been, like, just bizarre? So I, I think you know this about me. If, if, you, if you're at Eastside and you know me, I mean, I really enjoy social media. I enjoy going on and seeing what people are doing. I enjoy reading articles. <clears throat> I enjoy um, just reading comments and watching videos and stuff. But lately, the last couple of months, my social media has been awful because I feel like every time I go onto Facebook, or every time I go onto Instagram, I'm not young enough and cool enough for TikTok, but Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, when I go on there, every day there's just a new crisis. Every day there's just a new battle. Every day there's just something new that makes me go like, why did I go on social media today? Why did I read? And I'm seeing some people nodding in the room here. Yolanda, you're nodding there because I know you feel the same way. You're like, can we just have some good news. And so even this morning in our VIP meeting that we have before the service, VIP stands for vision, information, and prayer. I just encourage the guys, let's just share some good things, what we're grateful for. Because when you go on social media, there is just so much rubbish and negativity. And one of the things that I've seen, one of the phrases that I've seen a lot on social media is people are saying, we are living in uncertain times. COVID has made these uncertain times. Um, no. 
We've always been living in uncertain times. A year ago, you didn't know if you were gonna get really sick the next day with a virus. A year ago, you didn't know if your salary was actually guaranteed. A year ago, you didn't know if your business was gonna close down or whatever. So every day that we live in, since you've been born until you die one day, every day, we're living in uncertain times because we're not sovereign. We're not God. We don't have all the answers. We don't know what's coming. Um, and Scripture says it like this. There is nothing new under the sun. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hang on, Mark. COVID is new. No, no, it's still a virus. And we've had viruses as long as we've had viruses. It's a new type of virus, but it's still a virus. We look at the race battles and the fights that are going on in, in the States and in our own country. That's not new. Um, races have been clashing for hundreds of years. We look at gender-based violence that has been brought to, to the fore, and right now in social media we're seeing a, a lot of that. And men have been abusing the least of these for as long as men have been around. And so there's nothing new. But I think what has made these times just so much more stressful for us is one morning you and I woke up and we looked out at the proverbial um, coast and it was smooth seas and a beautiful day and there wasn't a breath of wind and suddenly these storm clouds just came out of nowhere and a storm has hit your life and my life and our country and this world and the storm just hasn't relented and just when we think we see a glimmer of hope through those storm clouds it gets dark again and something else happens and it actually leads me to the passage that I want us to look at this morning. So if you've got your Bible, will you open it? Will you take out your phone? Because I think there's just something um, significant about us actually reading on our own books, our own, own devices. You can take some notes. And so we're going to look at um, Mark chapter 4. While you get there, let me pray for us. Father, this morning, I'm so grateful that we have the privilege, Father, of standing, sitting in hope this morning that in spite of what is going on in our lives, in spite of what is going on in our country, in our church, the things that we've been praying through, Father, we, we can still stand in hope. Thank you, God, that mountains are still being moved. Thank you that wonders are still what you do. Thank you that we have the confidence, Father, that comes from your word. And so I commit the next couple of minutes to you. Father, I pray that your word will go so far and beyond my words this morning. Lord, that you would speak to our hearts you would transform our lives and our thinking in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's head to um, Mark chapter 4. This is what it says. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were all the, also other boats with them. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up, he rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you still afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, I love scripture. I think anyone um, that has been on a journey with God, which is our slogan here at Eastside, um, it, I mean, there is just so much, there is so much of God's presence in his word. There is so much of God's authority and of his power in his word. And what, what, one of the things I really love about scripture is when I look at a story like this, and I'd be surprised if anyone in the room this morning has never heard this before. You've probably heard the scripture. You've probably read the scripture. You've probably heard sermons in the scripture. You could probably possibly come and preach about this passage better than I can this morning. But I love when we go to scripture that we've read time and time again and something um, about a passage or about a verse just comes alive and it speaks to that moment, that situation and I spoke about this the other, the other night when I was preaching. It's called a rhema word. It's when the, the word of God just comes alive in that moment for that season. And I think that this for us is a rhema word because I think every one of us can relate to those disciples. We're in a boat. We're all in different boats, but we're in a boat. And a storm has come out of nowhere. And we need to figure out what is going on. 
And so this morning, I want to look at what I believe God is saying to us um, through this passage. And so keep your Bibles open and keep it open on your phone. If you've got your phone, we're going to read through it. And I'm going to go back from verse 35. Here's what it says. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. You know, as I read this the other day, I thought that is... That is the key for us. That is why so many of us as Christians are struggling to figure out what is going on in the world right now. It's because we are in the middle of the crowd. A lot of us are in the crowd. We're being pushed and pulled and pushed all over the place. I don't know, I don't know if you enjoy going to concerts, you know, like when there's a, a big band or something at F&B Stadium and there's a big concert. I know a lot of people love going to those things. I really don't because I don't enjoy standing like this with a whole bunch of people pushing me everywhere and now I need to try to get to the bathroom or something and I know that I'm going to have to like squeeze my way through or like tunnel my way through people. But you know what, right now, I feel like the world is like that. Everyone is cramped together trying to figure life out, trying to figure out what is going on. And for us as Christians, if we are in the crowd, we are trying to process what's going on in the world from within the crowd. And if you're short like me, there's probably a whole bunch of tall people around you and you can't see anything. All you're seeing is someone's jacket or someone's back right up in front of us. And this scripture right here, what we see is the disciples and Jesus, when the storm was approaching, they stepped out of the crowd. As Christians, we cannot be part of the crowd. Now, I, I, again, I know you can't just, because you're a Christian, go, well, I'm stepping out of corona. It doesn't affect me anymore. Um, I'm not susceptible to the virus because I'm a Christian. I'm not saying that. But what is different is our thinking, and our perspective on things as Christians. We cannot have a crowd mentality in the way that we think, in the way that we process, in the way that we respond to what is going on in this world. Much of what Jesus did when he was on earth, if you go through the, because it's a really amazing reminder of who Jesus is and what he came to accomplish, and much of what Jesus did when he was on earth is he was changing the way that people were thinking. And if you go and have a look um, in the book of Romans chapter 12, and I want to read that to you. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and, two, 1 and 2. This is what it says. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. And here's what verse 2 says. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, the way that you think, the way that you look at what is going on um, in life today. And so you cannot, you cannot, cannot, cannot be part of the crowd in the way that you're thinking. And so when we find ourselves as Christians, this is a good test. When we find ourselves in Christians facing any kind of difficult scenario to process, and right now, hundreds of things that are hard to process. When we find that we are starting to agree with what people are saying, when we are agreeing with people's perspective, when we are agreeing with what the news is saying, when we are agreeing with what our um, sick, uh, unsafe friends are saying at a bri, which you're not going to, what your unsafe friends are saying on social media or on your Zoom calls, when we start agreeing with what people are saying, that's a big red flag. Because our thinking is supposed to be different. We are not supposed to be part of the crowd. You see, we have got, um, we've got an enemy in the form of Satan. And this is what um, Scripture tells us about Satan in 1 Peter um, 5 verse 8. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. This is what um, we read. Be, be self-controlled and alert. For your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, at some point in my journey, I've like circled and underlined the word devour because 
I think sometimes we think that Satan is kind of strolling around and he's going, oh, let me just, let me just intimidate that person a little bit. Let me just make that person a little bit uncomfortable. Let me just kind of shake up their lives. But no, 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 that's not his goal. His purpose is not to make our lives uncomfortable. Satan's purpose is not to make our lives a little bit like, frustrated. His purpose, as we just read in 1 Peter 5, said, is he is looking like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. And one of, the, one of his, his strategies is to deceive. That is, the scripture speaks about Satan as the deceiver. He comes to try and cloud our judgment, to come and try to change the way and lie to us about the way that we think about certain things. And you know how he does that? Through imitation. The greatest deception is imitation. You've heard about people who um, need to learn how to recognize counterfeit money. You've heard that story? How do they recognize counterfeit money? They spend a lot of time getting to know the texture and the feel and the look of the real thing. And so a lot of the time, because we don't know the real thing, because we don't know the real texture of the gospel of Jesus, because we don't know the real texture of the truth of Jesus Christ that sets us free, when imitation comes, it looks a lot like the real thing. And so when something looks really good, Christian, you've got to have that red flag up and you've got to think, well, this is too good to be true. Something is not right here. This is too good to be true. Something needs to change. And so I want to illustrate it um, like this. I actually meant to bring a bit of a prop with me, but I've left it at the back there. When I go to a 3D movie, now I must confess that I'm not a big fan of 3D movies for the reason I'm about to tell you. If I walk in like this, you know, I go to a movie and I buy my ticket or I don't know whatever, and then I walk into a 3D movie and I sit down on my chair and I look at the screen and this 3D movie comes on. It is awful. It's, it's, it's just a blur and it's a mess and I can't, like it makes no sense. But you know what I've realized? That for a 3D movie to be successful and effective for me, I actually need three things. The first thing I need is I need my glasses. Because even if I look at the back there, I can't read anything right now. I don't, I don't see so well very far. So the first thing I need when I go into the 3D glasses, into a 3D movie, is I need, I need my first set of lenses that, that make it a bit better, but it still doesn't quite do it. I, I need two more things. I need a red lens, and I need a, what is it, blue, green, yellow, purple. But basically, I need 3D glasses, which have two color lenses. So effectively, before a 3D movie makes sense to me, before I can experience a 3D movie in the way that the director and the producer and whoever intended for me to experience it, I need to have three lenses. I need to have my normal glasses. And yes, I'm that guy sitting in a 3D movie with my 3D glasses over my normal glasses. So I need my lenses, I need the red lens, and I need the blue lens, or the green lens, whatever it is. The same way when we go into the world and we look at this, this 3D movie that is, that is life, we need three lenses. We need the lens of the centrality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, the gospel and the truth and the teaching of Jesus is central to everything. We need the lens of faith, and we need the lens of biblical wisdom. And so what do I mean by that? that? We need to be asking ourselves, whenever we face anything, whenever we're questioning anything, whenever there's something that confuses us, we, we've got to ask first question, is there a direct or an indirect instruction in the Gospels reflected through the Gospel of Jesus Christ that will help me to process this moment? Or our second question we need to ask is, is this an opportunity for my faith to grow? Is Jesus requiring of me to exercise my faith in this moment. And the third one is outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is there just biblical wisdom from all of the other books in the Bible that can directly or indirectly apply in this situation? And so um, let me try to think of some examples where we would do this, where we would look at what's going on in the world right now, and we will try to filter it through the lenses that I've just spoken about, the centrality of the gospel, faith, and godly wisdom. Um, let's start by looking at COVID. It has affected millions of people around the world. And so maybe one of the ways that COVID has affected you is that your income has been reduced or you've lost your income entirely. So you go, okay, the world is panicking. People are taking out loans. The banks are milking people who are already 
too deep in debt. FMB is giving them another loan on top of their existing loans to try to service their other loan. And so we go, but hang on, I'm a Christian. I can't think from within the crowd. I've got to step out of the crowd. I've got to think about this differently. So here's the test. Is there direct or indirect instruction in the gospel of Jesus Christ about this? Well, yes, there is. Because Jesus promises. He says things like, look at the birds of the field. If I care for the birds, I'm going to care for you. He says things like, if an evil father knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more would I give good gifts to those who love me? In other words, I, I'm, going to, I'm your father. I'm going to care for you. I will look after you. Jesus did not get into lockdown mode and go, okay, guys, this one's too big for me. Um, I know I've promised to provide, but but I'm tapping out right now. I just can't do it. So no, we look, okay, through the lens of the centrality of gospel and the teaching of Jesus Christ and, and the grace of Jesus, Jesus gives me a promise that he will provide my needs according to his glorious riches. What about, is this an opportunity for my faith to grow? Well, yes, it is, because these are times where all of us need to actually just exercise a little bit more faith because we have to believe even more that Jesus is a provider. We need to believe even more what we sang just now, that miracles happen when we believe that healing is coming in our room, that heaven is coming, that the kingdom of God is advancing. Uh, the church in this season is advancing. I wish I had time to kind of read a whole bunch of stats to you, but I want to encourage you to go and research what is happening um, to the church in these times. And yes, governments all across the world are trying to limit us. It is, it is amazing. If you're in the room this morning, I'm so glad to see you. But I wish there were many more of you. And I wish that those of you who are online could be with us. There are, by the way, if you're online, there are still seats. So you could have been here. So next week, you've got to be here. But, right? Tell them it's better here, right? Yes, okay. So, so yes, we're limited and governments are making us only meet with 50 people. But despite that, um, the church of Jesus Christ is advancing and working and changing lives. And there are so many stories. Um, go find them. So is there biblical wisdom? So does the gospel say something? Is this an opportunity for my faith? Is there biblical wisdom? Well, yes. There is quite a bit in Proverbs about not being lazy. So I have been so encouraged by people who I've seen who have said, like, I've, I've lost my job or my income has been reduced, but I'm making masks and I'm selling masks. Or, I mean, early on when winter came, when winter started, I put something else on Facebook and I said, like, we want to support someone who maybe their income has been reduced. I, I want wood. We needed wood for our bras and for our... Um, our fire at home, and so is there anyone, and there, and there are some people that respond, and like, I've, I've never dealt with wood before, but because my income's been reduced, I'm selling wood now. That, that comes from biblical wisdom, because I'm not going to sit on my, on my butt and do nothing. I'm not going to be lazy, but I'm going to make a plan, and so there is um, that biblical wisdom. So that is, that is an example of how whenever we face anything, we have to look through those lenses. You see, when we separate ourselves, even though we face the same storm, and I've been really, I've really enjoyed the analogy um, that I've seen online quite a bit, that we're all facing the same storm. We're in different boats. Some of our boats are able to weather the storm a bit better. Some of our boats had 20 holes in before the storm hit. But when we separate ourselves, even though we face the same storm, we're able to use a biblical worldview and a biblical thinking to respond biblically to whatever storm we face individually or collectively. We cannot be part of the crowd. I want to keep reading. Um, back to Mark chapter 5. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. So the first thing I want us to take out of this this morning is that we can't be part of the crowd. But the second thing is this. The presence of Jesus does not prevent the storm presence of Jesus does not prevent the storm. How many of you in 2020 at some point or in the last two years or whenever have just said, man, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus in this moment? Where was Jesus? So I saw um, a post the other day and I've actually shared it on my Facebook because I was like blown away. Someone went and listed all of the things that have happened in 2020 that have been like global thing. Do you know that the Australian fires were this year? 
doesn't that seem like, it seems like so long ago to me, but it was this year. And so anyway, like, I mean, that's for free. You can have that on for free. So where was Jesus when the fires were raging and destroying people's homes? Where was Jesus when this virus started spreading across the earth? Where was Jesus when all of the police brutality started, what was brought to the fore and more people were, were being killed in the States? Where was Jesus when my husband was abusing me and my child? Where was Jesus when I lost my job? Where was Jesus when my wife walked out on me? Where was Jesus? Now, the answer to this question for the disciples was incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable. You see, when, when the storm came up and the disciples were facing the storm, and, and I don't know, I mean, the Bible doesn't say much about their conversation. I don't know if they were trying to make plans to, like, bail, or I don't know what their plans were, but I'm sure there was a lot of fear. I'm sure when they saw this big fear, there was, there was I mean, when they saw the big storm, there's a lot of fear, and someone must have at some point, there must have been the first guy who said, hang on, we're all here. Where's Jesus? Where is Jesus in the middle of the storm? And what was the answer? It's so uncomfortable. He's asleep. In the middle of a huge storm, Jesus was asleep. Now, remember just now, I spoke a lot about biblical thinking and not thinking like the crowd. So here's what someone in the crowd says. Someone in the crowd says, I am facing a storm. And Jesus, who is supposed to protect me, Jesus, who is supposed to be my provider, Jesus, who is supposed to be my healer, he is asleep. That's what someone in, in the crowd says. Someone who has managed to step out of the crowd and look at life through the lenses of the centrality of the gospel, the testing of our faith and biblical wisdom, is able to say, in the middle of my storm, Jesus is sleeping, which obviously means there's nothing to panic about. Because if Jesus can be at peace, if Jesus can be at rest, if Jesus is not worried, if he's not stressed, if, if he's not like throwing his toys out of the cot, well, I don't, I don't need to either. If, in other words, if Jesus is sleeping, well, then I can sleep as well. Now, I know some of, even as I look around the room this morning, I know some of your storms. Some of us have had conversations about the storms that you are facing. But there are more of you this morning who, I don't know your stories. I don't know your storm. I don't know what you're facing. And so maybe you're saying, Mark, when you say that Jesus could be sleeping in the storm, that, that really, like, that just breaks me. Well, I don't know your storm. I don't know when your storm is going to end. But I do know this. I know where Jesus is in the middle of your storm. He is right where he needs to be. Jesus doesn't always respond in the storm like we like him to. And I really loved the, the last sermon series that we've just come out, Rion preaching three weeks through the book of Habakkuk, which was just for me such a blessing and such an encouraging series. And one of the things that have stood out to me is that it's, it's actually okay for us to be frustrated. It's actually okay for us to ask the questions, to say, Jesus, I'm in the middle of the storm. Where are you? It's actually okay to do of Jesus that we get to ask him. We don't accuse him, though, of not being there because he's always there. And so the presence of Jesus doesn't prevent the storm. But let's carry on reading. Um, I'm in the wrong book here. I'm going to go back to Mark. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat, so it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care? If we drown. And he got up, he rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Again, at some point in my journey, I don't, I don't know when, I don't remember writing this, but I've written, yeah, I've circled quiet, be still, and I've written only Jesus. Only Jesus. You see, the presence of Jesus doesn't prevent the storm. But the presence of Jesus does calm the storm. So I love that Jesus just, he's sleeping. They wake him. He just stands up. And he doesn't speak to the disciples. Did you notice that? He doesn't answer them immediately. 
So they say, Jesus, don't you care that we, we might drown? He doesn't get up and say, disciples, of course I care that you don't drown. Disciples, why didn't you wake me earlier? He doesn't speak to them immediately. He gets up. Like, I've got, I've got quite a vivid imagination when it comes to this kind of thing. I almost imagine that he's sleeping on a cushion. The disciples are gathered around him. I almost imagine that he gets up and quite dramatically just, like, walks through the crowd. And you've seen those movie scenes where as he walks, like, the crowd just parts. Picture it with me. And then he gets to the edge of the boat, and he says to the storm, just be quiet. And then he turns around, and he has the conversation. But I love the fact that Jesus immediately just calms the storm. And true peace cannot be restored in your life in the absence of Christ. You see, what Jesus did when he spoke to the storm is he restored peace. He restored things back to how they were before the storm came up. And I love that that happens in the presence of Jesus. This morning, as we were going around the room in our VIP meeting and speaking about our wins, um, Rian just said, I've just had such special times in the presence of Jesus. And I've seen that it's in the presence of Jesus that we were able to, where peace is able to be restored. And so if you're going through a storm and you really want peace to be restored in your life, go to where Jesus is. There was a point at which the disciples realized for us, to get to the solution, we have to go to where he is. And at that time, he happened to be sleeping. And so they woke him. But if you want to be, if you want peace to be restored in your life, you have to go to where Jesus is. Now, here's the incredible thing that I want to, I just love it. And um, the disciples, in their storm, Jesus was sleeping. In your storm, I don't know where Jesus is right now, but I know he's where he's meant to be. And I know he's not sleeping. Do you know how I know that? Psalm 121, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. In the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, this is what Jesus says. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Quick news flash. Um, and, and I don't have to have the gift of prophecy to be able to tell you this. It's just common sense. This storm that you're going through, it's going to end. Peace will be restored at some point. But there will be another storm. I'm sorry. But it's how it works. And Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble. But then he says this, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. In other words, you're going to have trouble in this world, but I've overcome the world, so don't even worry about it. Just rest in me. And so I want to ask you this. Are you going through a storm right now? Do you need Jesus to stand up and calm the storm on your behalf? Do you need him to just look into your life and say, just be still? I actually, if, if, if you are, and if that is your big need right now, I actually want us to pray right now. I don't want to wait until the end and have a moment. We're talking about peace right now, talking about the storm. So I want to pray with you. And so in a moment here, if you're in the room, I'm going to ask us, we're going to close our eyes, we're going to pray, and I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand if you are going through a storm so that I know who I'm praying for. But if you're online, would you just, in the comment section, if you're going through a storm and you're saying, man, Mark, I just want that peace, would you just type the word me? Just me. Nothing else. Just, just say me. And then what's going to happen is everyone else that's watching is going to be able to pray with you. So if you're online and you see someone comment and say, me, would you take a moment while we're praying and pray for that person, whether you know them or not, you'll be able to see their name. And if you're in the room and, and you're not going to put up your hand in the moment because maybe you're not going through a storm, would you, where you're sitting, just pray for those who are? So let's pray together. Let's close our eyes and just focus on the presence of Jesus who calms a storm. And if that is you, would you just... In the room, raise your hand with me if you're online. Would you just type the word me? Jesus, you see every hand that is raised. You see every person who has indicated online that they're going through a storm. And Jesus, I thank you that you promised to give us a peace that goes beyond all understanding. And I ask that right now, Jesus, you would come in this room. Every hand that's raised, that you would just touch every person with a supernatural sense of your peace. Would you calm the storm? 
Jesus, if it is in your will to calm the storm right now, would you calm us within the storm? And would you give us that supernatural peace? I pray for every single person online who has indicated that they're in a storm. Father, would you meet their need in their room while there might be chaos going around and kids might be running around the lounge? Lord, would you just create for them a moment of peace? Would you calm that storm? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so the scripture carries on, um, and this is, this is what we read. Jesus says, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Who saw him heal people. These were the same disciples who saw him feed 5,000. These were the same disciples who saw him drive out demons. These were the same disciples who by now should have known that he was a miracle-working God. And he says, do you still have no faith? And so the final thing for us this morning, we've got to realize that we have to step out of the crowd. We've got to realize that the presence of Jesus doesn't prevent the storm, but the presence of Jesus does calm the storm. And the final thing for us is we must remember our smooth seas. Your life has not been a constant storm. There were times where there was smooth sailing and God came through for you in an amazing way. And so Rian spoke about this a couple of weeks ago as well when he spoke about journaling. And so I don't want to speak much into that because he said it way better than I would. But I do want to reiterate the point that when Jesus does something amazing in your life, there are a few things that you need to do so that you can remember the smooth seas. And the first thing that you've got to do is you have to tell people. You know, when we verbally tell a story, that story just seems to be lodged down memory so much better. And being able to tell the story of what Jesus is doing is not only an encouragement for everyone else, but it's actually an encouragement for you as well. And so I want, to, I want us to do something this morning. So I don't know if you, if you follow us. If you don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you need to do that because we're communicating a lot. And we started a, um, a what do you call it, like a campaign this past week uh, on social media called We Have a Story to Tell. And this is what we're going to be doing. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we are going to be telling good stories of what Jesus is doing. We want to tell stories about what Jesus is doing in the church. We want to tell stories about what Jesus is doing in our school, what Jesus is doing through Abba's Pride. But we actually also want to tell your story. And so here's what I want us to do. Online, right here, wherever. Would you take out your phone? Would you go to our website, esi.org.za, and there is a button there that says Connect Card. Would you click on it and open it? If you've got the Church Center app, you can do it on the Church Center app. And where there's a block that says prayer request or testimony or comments, tell us a good story. Even if it's one line of what Jesus has done, not enough of you are taking your phones out. Even if it's just one line of what Jesus has done. You know, some of the things that I heard this morning that I can remember, even through lockdown, um, both of us, have been able to earn our full salaries. That, that is the kind of thing that we want you to tell us. Um, John and Chris are expecting a baby in December, and they went for tests, and everything came back clear. That, that is a story. John and Chris have a story to tell. People, um, Sean was in, in a horrendous car accident. being sound this morning, and God has provided a brand new car for him. Sean's got a story to tell. Those are the stories you want to tell. If you start telling people, next time you face a storm, You'll remember, hey, I remember that time on the 28th of June when I sat at church and I opened my phone. There's still not enough phones around. And I opened my phone and, and I told the story. So tell people. The second thing that you need to do is you need to write it down. Even if you don't journal a lot, you should still have even just a thing on your phone or in a book somewhere where you just write down the wins. Just write down what Jesus has done in your life. So when you face a storm again, you can take out that book and just go, these are all the times that Jesus met my need. These are all the times that Jesus calmed the storm in my life. And then the final one is give thanks. Give thanks regularly for the things that he's done. Don't give thanks this week. Sean, in three years' time, be giving thanks for God's protection. John and Chris, when your child is being flippin' naughty, and so Nate thought it would be funny yesterday to throw his brand new shoes in the fire. In that moment, 
I should have been thanking God for Nate's health. And <laughs> I wasn't. But so John and Chris, when your child is being naughty in seven years' time, give God thanks for those test results that came back clear. Continuously give thanks. I think we should get to a place where we need to set out like a whole day a week just to give thanks because we've got such a long list of what God has done. You know, the only reason that we have the story to look back on in Scripture, and the only reason we're able to look at these principles is because there were disciples in the boat with Jesus. They weren't strangers. They were disciples. And a disciple is one who has accepted the gift of salvation that Jesus offers. A disciple is one who has surrendered their lives to Christ. And a disciple is one who is purposefully trying to live the life Jesus calls us to live. If you are not a disciple, you won't be able to step out of the crowd. If you are not a disciple, you won't be able to go to where Jesus is to experience his peace. So I want to invite you this morning to change your eternal destination and the destiny of your life. And to, if you are not, if you've never given your life to Jesus this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to become not just someone who puts up their hand and prays a prayer and that's done, but someone who gets in the boat with Jesus and goes on a journey with him. And so I'm going to pray. And if you have never asked Jesus into your life, would you pray this prayer with me? Let's pray together, church. Jesus, thank you that you came and that you lived and that you died on earth and that you died to redeem me. You died to forgive me for my sin. You died, Jesus, so that I could go and be with you one day in all eternity. So Jesus, this morning I want to ask you, and I do ask you to forgive me for my sin. This morning, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, to be my Savior, and to be my Lord. This morning, I surrender my life to you, and I get in the boat with you, Jesus. And I thank you that you will be with me through every storm. I give my life to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer this morning, if you're online, would you click that button and let us know? The reason we want you to let us know is not because we care about numbers. We care about you as a person, as an individual. And what we would love to be able to do is we would love to connect with you. We'd love to have a conversation with you. We'd love to give you some resources to help you understand what it means to be a disciple. And if you're in the room with us this morning and you pray that prayer for the first time, would you come and speak to one of the pastors after the service? We'll keep our distance We'll keep our masks on, but we'd love to be able to pray with you and be able to speak to you. It has been so good to be back with you again this morning. Really online, if you can be at church next Sunday, do it. You will be so glad you came back. Have an amazing Sunday, and we'll see you next week. God bless, and goodbye.